And now, the East West Chester Corporation, maker of fashionable plastic fruits and vegetables for all your home decorating needs, brings you the continuing saga of a poor body repair shop heiress on an endless search for love and togetherness on The Gathering Dusk. As we look in on the Fillmore household today, Martha, the not overly high achieving daughter, is waiting the arrival of John, her fiance of ten longing years, for their dinner date. While waiting, she has been searching for her pet cat, Buttons, who has been hiding for several hours. Suddenly, the doorbell rings. Oh, I wonder if that's Buttons. If it is, she's learned to ring the doorbell since last I saw her. Oh, my beloved John, it's you. Have you seen my buttons? Oh, not since you last wore that green jacket of yours, my dear. Oh, John, if I suspected you were in the least bit witty, I would have assumed you just told a joke. I'm ready to go, but we must hurry. Our reservations are for seven. But before we go, I have something to show you that I'm quite excited about. Why, now that you mention it, you do look excited. And you appear to be carrying a large cabinet. Well, the reason for my excitement is that I'm about to embark on a new career. And this large cabinet plays a big part in that endeavor. So tell me, sweet John, what is this new vocation that has you so giddy? And do hurry, I'm quite hungry. First, allow me to set this cabinet down in your living room, my precious moth. Do be careful with that thing, John. My mother would be quite upset if you were to get slivers of wood on the carpet. And of course, I need not tell you how upset she would be if you scuffed the woodwork. Well, as you know, my dearest love, I have been studying the fine art of illusion and sleight of hand at the great Bardoli's school of illusion and sleight of hand. You have? I'm afraid I didn't know that. Uh, but I've been telling you about it for several months now. Oh, is that what you've been talking about? Oh, I'm afraid I wasn't listening, my dear. You're so delightfully boring that I found the only way to keep from falling asleep when I'm with you is to simply ignore everything you're saying and recite poetry in my head. Oh, I am so sorry for my ability to bore you beyond reason, my love. And I do so appreciate your efforts to remain awake in my presence. Isn't that what you love most about me, my precious John? Well, perhaps not most, but it certainly is in the top ten. Uh, but getting back to the topic at hand... Oh, yes, let's. As you may recall, I'm... I'm quite hungry. Of course. Uh, well, after several months, my studies in illusion and sleight of hand with the great Bardoli are over. I have graduated. See? Here is my certificate, signed by the great Bardoli himself. Oh, how exciting, dear John. Is this certificate worth the paper it's printed on? Ah, I will let you be the judge of that, my sweetheart. Allow me to demonstrate. Why, I believe that's a deck of cards you have there, John. Well, take a card, any card. Any card? Are you sure? If I take a card, you're going to have an incomplete deck. Are you sure that's what you want? Won't that make it hard for you to play solitaire? Oh, do not fear, my dear Smartha. I will ask for the card back. Oh, then you're not actually offering for me to take a card, but rather just borrow one. Now, look at the card and remember it. Then return it to the deck, please. I is that the illusion? Oh, please don't take this the wrong way, John, but... That's not much of a trick. Oh, but the trick is not over, my precious. I will now shuffle the cards, and then I will reach into the deck and pull out the card you have selected. I believe it was the Queen of Hearts. No, it was the Seven of Spades. Oh, it was? Oh, what a delightfully mundane feat of illusion, my adorable beau. Although it would have been more effective if you'd pulled out the same card from the deck that I did. Oh, well, we were supposed to select the same card from the deck. I'm afraid you must have done something wrong, my dear Martha. Terribly sorry, my pet. Would you like to do it again? J just tell me in advance which card you'd like for me to select. Oh, please don't fret another moment, my beautiful Martha. I have another trick to show you. Does it involve a deck of cards? No, it involves this piece of paper and this pitcher of milk. Are you going to drink the milk, my treasure? Would you like me to get you a glass? Oh, that won't be necessary, lovely Martha. See how I am forming this piece of paper into a cone? Why, that's a simply amazing sleight of hand, my dashing John. It would take a child of five to be able to perform a feat like that. Ah, but that isn't even the highlight of the trick, my dear. Watch now as I pour the milk from this pitcher into the cone-shaped piece of paper. Are you certain that's a good idea, my darling? No need to worry, my dearest. The milk will go from the pitcher into the cone-shaped piece of paper, and then I shall make it disappear. Observe. Well, you were right. The milk is no longer in the pitcher. But it also isn't in the cone-shaped piece of paper. 
It's all over the floor. Well, that shouldn't have happened. Well, look at the bright side, my beloved. You got two out of three. And it might be just the thing to bring buttons out of hiding. Buttons? I do hope your failure to achieve success was caused by your own incompetence and not some error on my part. I shall have to refer to the textbook on that one. I'm sorry to have let you down, my dear. Oh, don't fret on my account, my love. I wasn't let down. There are some very simple tasks that you are totally incapable of doing correctly, so I had no expectation that you'd be able to accomplish something as difficult as making something disappear. Well, that is comforting, my precious. And you are correct in saying that making something disappear is difficult. And that leads me to my final illusion, and it involves this cabinet I've carried into your living room. Are you going to make the cabinet disappear? My mother would be especially pleased with that. If she were to see it here in our living room, she would be none too happy. No, I will not make the cabinet disappear, but rather what I put into the cabinet. Oh, well, I have a few suggestions then. I just received this credit card statement in the mail, and I really wouldn't mind seeing that disappear. Oh, I am thinking of something much larger than that, my dear. I have a rather large balance due. What could be larger than that? Why, I intend to make you disappear, my love. You're going to make me disappear? Me? Oh my, that does sound exciting. I should very much like to see that. Oh, but if you make me disappear, then I won't see it. Oh, I shall be sure to tell you all about it, my precious. Now, if you would kindly step inside the cabinet, please. Oh, of course. And I will close the door like this. It's rather dark in here, and it smells like varnish. Now I will say the magic words, abracadabra, and open the door, and you are gone. Why, it worked. You are gone. <coughs> oh, what's this? <coughs> oh, dear. It appears as though, rather than making you disappear, I have turned you into a cat. <coughs> Oh, I certainly wasn't expecting this. But don't worry, my love. I will call the great Bardoli right away and find out how to turn you back into a woman. In the meantime, I should probably pick you up so that no harm comes to you. Oh, yes, sweet Martha. I understand you are quite upset with me, and rightly so. After all, I have turned you from my metaphorical pet into my actual pet. Well, l let us waste no time in seeing the great Bardoli. Oh, that is right, my precious kitten. You had stated earlier how hungry you are, and our dinner reservations are for 7 p.m. You know, if we go see the great Bardoli, we will never make it in time for dinner. I suppose it would be best for us to dine first, and then turn you back into a woman afterward. Of course, one advantage to that is, as a cat, you are not likely to eat as much as you would as a human being. <coughs> <coughs> 